Today we're unboxing and setting up the Bamboo Lab A1 Mini Combo. I'm gonna walk you through step-by-step -step unboxing the Bamboo Lab A1 Mini Combo, how to set it up in full assembly. It can be pretty stressful when setting up new 3D printers, but don't worry because I got you on this. We're gonna first start by unboxing everything. We're gonna assemble the printer. We're gonna put together the AMS and connect it. And then we're gonna walk you through printing your first 3D print. So let's first get started with step number one to start your unboxing. This is pretty straightforward. Just get yourself a pair of scissors or a sharp knife and and open up the box. I realize that there's kind of a technique in pulling out the bag. The bag itself is taped to the sides of the boxes. All you have to do is unpeel them and just kind of pull the entire printer setup out and let the box fall out beneath it. Then just kind of cut away from the plastic because it's all sealed in one big bag. It's kind of crazy to think that the entire 3D printer and AMS unit is in here. So yeah, just peel away the plastic, and the next step is to actually take apart the first layer of the foam here. See this one? Just take it up off and set it to the side. In this tray, we have a bunch of different parts that we're actually going to be needing. This is the build plate for the A1 Mini here. It's beautiful, is it not? Very shiny, very beautiful. Here's the instructional pamphlet. This is what you can kind of go through if this video isn't of help to you. And then we have our spool holders that go into the AMS here. Then we have this little box of tools and accessories. Hang on to this. This is all going to be very useful. We have wrenches, lubricants, screws, etc. Then we have Bamboo Labs filament sample tray here. This is kind of just a cool little example of what Bamboo Labs, all their colorations they offer with filament. This can sometimes be helpful if you're looking for a certain color of filament and you can't figure it out. Just go to this and it will tell you. And this last part is the purge wiper. You probably don't know what that is, but we will get to that upon installation. Just set it to the side. All right, so now let's continue dismantling the printer from the packaging. Just lightly start pulling out pieces of foam. Bamboo Lab does a great job packaging all this, and you can just kind of lightly pull out the pieces of foam until the printer is sort of by itself. One tricky part is kind of pulling out the AMS because the cords kind of get stuck in the foam, but you'll figure it out. Once you get to the bottom here, the printer can just be pulled out. Just place your hands on the foam and just kind of pull out the printer body itself, and it will come right out. Set the printer in an area by itself and kind of just dig through all of the remnants here and make sure you got all your accessories out of it. Then we can just trash all this and get rid of it. Next, what we want to do is we want to actually turn the printer body around so that we're going to be working on the back of it. Because what we're going to have to do here is we're going to have to remove this bracket and there's four little screws in this bracket here. We need to remove this. And to remove the screws, we need to find this Allen wrench. It's going to be the one here on the right, the larger of the two. So grab that tool and just put it in the screw and loosen these four screws. We'll have two on the side here and then two more on the inside there. And remember, lefty loosey, righty tighty. Next, what we want to do here is we want to pull out these small little pieces of styrofoam underneath the bed of your printer. There's one on the front and then there's also one in the back. Just pull these out ever so gently. All right, so for this next step, what we wanna do here is go underneath the bed. There's gonna be three screws, sets of screws. See these three right here? One, two, and then the third one is on this side right here. So go grab that Allen screw screwdriver thingy, and what we need to do is tighten all three of these screws, tighten them, but not too tight. I realize that mine turned a couple spins, and then you kinda just want it slightly tight, but don't crank on it. Hopefully that makes sense. Guys, so moving on to the next step here, grab your purge wiper. It looks exactly like this thing here. And it actually goes on the corner of this mounting arm right here. See this little spot right here? There's a slot in which it kind of seats in there and it slides right in there. So it slides in there, but also there's a screw that we need to put in there so that it's tightened. So let's go find the screw and the Allen key to turn the screw. So go on over to your box of accessories and look for the bag that says purge wiper. There's a little screw in there. Put the purge wiper in the assembly itself and then lift up the side of the printer and then use that Allen key to put the screw on there and then twist it inside till it tightens up nice and snug. For this next part, we're gonna be attaching this filament arm holder to the side of the unit. So spin it around backwards and go and find in the little accessory box this little piece of plastic right here. We're gonna be attaching this to the arm unit on the printer itself right here. So go and grab that same Allen key we have been using and then we have to find the screws. Look for the bag that says four spool holder, take these screws out, put the screws into the holes of the little piece right here, 
and then put your tool on the inside of the screw head and kind of just line it up and then set the screws in. Tighten it to the assembly itself, but don't crank on it too tight. And remember, righty tighty, lefty loosey. Then you can go ahead and grab the bracket itself. And this kind of just seats right inside that little holster right there. So if you line it up, it'll just press right down and seat pretty tightly. It's actually a great design. All right, so now what we can do is flip your printer around so it's facing forward. And what you need to do now is peel off all the stickers, zip ties, and remaining cardboard, styrofoam. Just make sure all of that stuff is completely removed. All right guys, so we're finished up with the printer itself. Now we're gonna work on putting together the AMS unit. So the AMS unit has two pieces. We have the holder and then the unit itself. As you can see here, it slots into each other and then there's four screws that we're gonna put in to hold it together. So go on over to the box of accessories here and we need to find the bag that says AMS stand. It has four screws in there, well actually five in case you lose one. Remove the screws from the bag and put them in the Allen key and now we're gonna put them in the AMS stand. There's gonna be four separate holes you will see them there's two on each individual side tighten the screws but not too tight you don't want to break the plastic just enough and then we're good to go the next step is we're going to put on the spool holders but take note of these colors right here we have yellow and green so if we go over to the actual spool holders these are actually color coordinated see that this is a green one and if we look at the other one it's a yellow one same with these two green and yellow. All right, so now we're gonna actually put the spool holders on the AMS, link up the colors here. We have green, and all you have to do is put it on that green cylinder. All you do is kind of push it in and then click it in. You shouldn't have to twist it to click it in at all. It's, poor, it's pure force, just push it in and it should click. And then continue the process to make sure all four of them are on. All right, our next process is to move the AMS unit closer to the printer. We need it around eight to 10 inches away from the printer itself because we're gonna install the PTFE tubes. These are essentially little tubes that go in here from the AMS unit and go all the way over to the printer head. This is what the filament is fed through. So go ahead and grab the bag of PTFE tubes. I know that's kind of hard to say. There should be four individual tubes in here and there's gonna be two of them that are longer in length. So please pay attention to that. And the reason for those longer tubes is because the two of them are a farther reach from the AMS, if that makes sense. Here, I'll show you guys. So grab the two shorter of the tubes and this is gonna go on the inside of the AMS because it's a closer reach. So just put these PTFE tubes gently in there and then push in it and it will snap. You'll feel it kind of click inside there. That click is a special fitting to allow the tube to push in, but it does doesn't pull out without clicking down on that fitting. Here's a close up of what it looks like. And again, you want the shorter of the two on the outside of the head here. See me just click it down, click, that's where it clicks in. So go ahead and install the shorter ones on the inside and then the longer tubes go on the outside right here. See that? And this next step, go ahead and grab this cord divider. It's kind of like a weird design looking star-like thing. And then insert the tubes in here. This is essentially to kind of tie all these tubes together. You'll notice that the tubes click nicely inside all the like the little holsters on the inside. So insert it right there. And then once you get all the tubes clicked inside there, what you can do is kind of push it up. And this helps keep all the tubes together nicely. All right, guys, we're heating up, man. We're getting closer and closer to 3D printing. Getting excited yet? All right, let's stay motivated, guys. All right, so the AMS, this needs to be at around a distance between eight to 10 inches away from the printer, remember. All right, so our next step is getting the cord ready for the AMS and plugging it into the side of the printer here. It's a five-prong plug-in, so you just plug it in right here. Next, we need to add the build plate to the actual printer itself. It is magnetized, and what we do is we line it up with the back of this design right here. Then go ahead and make sure the 3D printer is plugged into the wall itself. Then our last step is to turn on the printer. There's a little on switch back here. Da, 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 da. Initiating power in three, two, one. All right, guys, congratulations. Our printer is now ready to go. Let's click the start button and it's gonna walk us through this small little startup where we can connect to the Wi-Fi and start printing. It will ask you a bunch of basic questions like what country you're in, what language you're using, and it will eventually ask you to connect to your Wi-Fi. You don't absolutely have to use Wi-Fi, but it makes printing from your computer, laptop, and your phone so much easier. It will also do a handful of calibrations that the printer needs to do. And after those are done, it's gonna alert you that it needs to be updated to the newest form of firmware. 
All right, guys, one of our final steps here, we are gonna be adding filament to the printer itself. So open up your filament. Once it's open, find the end of the filament. Usually it's taped to the side, remove that. And what I like to do is cut the end off, just in case any of that tape residue is on the end. Then you can take the roll of filament and put it onto the spool holder and make sure it's feeding the correct way so the filament feeds into the filament tubes there. And as the filament's feeding in there, you have to push in that yellow button and then push the filament in and the machine will actually start to auto feed the filament. It's a crazy cool feature. All right guys, let's go on over back to the LED screen. We're gonna print our first file. So click on print files here. And there's actually a bunch of built-in files that we can print that come with it. So pick which one you want to print and then actually click on the file. I'm going to print this 3D Benchy. And then click on the next button and make sure you choose which roll of filament where you put it on the AMS. It's going to tell you, please select filament for all colors. So choose that one where you put your filament on there and then click next and it's going to print your file. So the printer is gonna go through a bunch of calibration process before it actually prints, but it will eventually get to it. A quick little tip, what I like to do is clean the plate with isopropyl alcohol. What I do is just spray it onto a paper towel and I clean the build plate between all my 3D prints. It's probably not gonna be a huge deal on your first couple prints, but as you get going, oils and such from your skin get on that build plate and it can affect your 3D prints. If you take a closer look at your nozzle, you'll see that it is purging filament that is perfectly normal in between each and individual 3D printing. It's also very important to know that we printed this 3D file from the storage on your 3D printer that came with it, but chances are you're gonna wanna be printing things from your cell phone or your computer. Usually the first step is printing from your cell phone. If you need help setting that up with your printer, consider checking out this next video right here.